So before I left to get, go to the car this morning, I was walking and I looked on the wall and I saw a spider. At first I didn't realize it was a spider. I said, oh shoot, let me do it. I didn't want to leave it and then wake up uh, tomorrow, go to sleep tomorrow and then, you know, I have a spider on me. So I was like, you know, might as well go kill it. I just locked myself out the house. <laughs> and I, just reckon, I just realized that, I just locked myself out. Um, but yeah, so, ah, uh, this time we're starting another video today. Either way, I killed a spider. Um, yeah, I locked myself out the house. That's fun. So my mom came now, opened the door and, and got my, I got it, went inside and got my key. So, you know, we all good now. But you know what I was just thinking about? So let's say I was a homeowner. You know what I'm saying? Let's say I'm a homeowner and let's say that I, I'm, a, I'm single. So it's just me in the house. Nobody else has a key. How the heck am I supposed to get back in if I lock myself out? I, I just, I don't, like, if you're in an apartment, okay, you get the land, um, landlord to let you in. You know what I'm saying? If you're if a partner, you know what I'm saying? They, they come and they open the door for you. If you're single... How in the world do you get back in the house? Do you have to like buy like or like get somebody to come open the door for you, like break it open, or like how does that work? Cause that that just doesn't make sense to me. Cause it's like nobody's gonna be inside, nobody else gonna have a key but you, unless you're just handing keys out. So yeah, you're kind of just done for. I, and that's why like I ain't gonna lie, I'm gonna have an extra car. Wait, no, cause if I have an extra key in my car, I still can't get into my car cause I don't have my keys. Might have to put one on the doormat. That might be the. I, I, Forget this. It's not gonna be on the doormat. When I get a house, it's not gonna be on the doormat. Gotta hear anything. Y'all right, man. I'm gonna get mad now. Don't don't do me like that. Man, I'll tell you right now, I'm in there lifting, looking in the mirror, and I keep telling myself, I don't get these legs straight. It's gonna be bad. Cause this upper body ain't, it ain't stopping growing. It ain't gonna stop. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger. And I gotta be careful, bro. Like, I ain't trying to look like a bodybuilder for real. I wanna be sculpted, but I ain't trying to be all big, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't trying to have non-functional muscle. You know what I'm saying? I want my muscle to do something. You know what I'm saying? Not that bodybuilders' muscles can't. It's just when you think of, like, the really big ones, like the really big-time ones, that, like, they muscle just not functioning. You know what I'm saying? They're going to be too tight. It's just, it's just how it is. So I'm going to have to get flexible. And start stretching, man. But anyways, how's y'all day going, man? Even though this morning we got locked out of the house today, it's still a great day. Getting ready for work at an 8 a.m. meeting. Um, it's at 7, the fact I said 8 a.m. And I'm awake. It tells you we're getting up early, man. Woke up at 520 today instead of 515. Had to give myself the extra five minutes. I needed it. But you know what I'm saying? Whew, I'm tired. That lift, that lift be killing me, man. But y'all know what I'm saying? So 8 a.m. meeting. Then we got work. I'm probably going to go around 10, 30, 11 today. Um, I got some signs signs to pick up. Take them to the office. Um, just some other stuff, man. So I hope y'all been enjoying the vlogs, man. You know, just talk. It's really just been talking with AB lately. Honestly, you just get random talks and occasions with me. Did y'all like my teleport the other day? Y'all know what I'm saying? I tried to teleport move for the first time in a while. It worked pretty good. Last time, I think my, my foot was turned the opposite way. It worked fit. looked like I work at Chick-fil-A. You know what I'm saying? It looked like I used to work at Chick-fil-A. In fact, I could never work at Chick-fil-A. Because if I worked at Chick-fil-A, I promise you, the chicken tenders would be on delay. The nuggets would be on delay. And the fries would be on delay. And the second day off delay, they'd be in my stomach. And then they'd be on delay again and again and again. Because I'm just eating them all. You can't, you can't put that food around me and expect it not to be gone. What you got going on? Let me teach you all a quick lesson real quick, man. So I'm taking these out of my car. And right here. Uh, but right here, I see it scrapes. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, I rub it to see if it'll come out. It ain't going to come out. But, you know, I, I didn't get shook up about it. I didn't get upset. I didn't get mad. I just said, just move forward. So I understood. Once it's done, it's done. You can't do nothing about it. I mean, what does worrying do? I was watching some earlier. It was basically just saying, man, has worry, has worry ever made anything better? What has worry ever done? Has worry ever created the solution to your problem? Worry never does anything but put you in a frenzy, bother your mind, stress you out, and, and, and leave you in a, in, a, in a state that you don't need to be in. Worry is not where we need to be at, man. We need to be in faith and trust in God. And this is a small thing, but even with the bigger things, we need to be just like that. Because at the end of the day, once it's out of your hands, it's out of your hands. Put it in God's and don't worry about it. 
officially off of work, man. Officially off of work. I'm also at work, but yet I'm off work. Uh, I'm about to leave now. I just had to drop something back off here. But today, you know, I don't know, I don't know what else we're doing. But one thing we're doing for sure is taking this darn hair out because it has been time. It has been time. Been lazy. That's what I've been. But hold up, man. Hold up, man. Check the fit. Check the fit. Check the fit. Shirt. Pants. Shirt. Pants. Pants. Shirt. Shirt. Pants. Shirt. Shirt. Pants. Shirt. Pants. 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 Shirt. Hair. Dude, look at the hair. I just told you I got to do it now. See, now, now, now y'all paying with my top. Look at the shirt. Look at the pants. Look, look at, what you looking at that for, man? Y'all know how to play the game. You know, I've said this before and I'll say it again. Free will is one of the greatest gifts given by God. Because again, I think it gives us such a difference in between each other. It creates so much uniqueness and it gives us the opportunity to be ourselves. Free will is the most beautiful thing. It gives us the opportunity to choose when we do it, how we do it, and if we want to do it, I think free will is beautiful. And I think what's so amazing about free will is it shows the character of God. It just shows who he is. It shows the humbleness. It shows the love. And it shows the integrity of our creator. The fact that he had made us and he could have easily put in our programming, ah, do this, ah, do that. He can easily say to us, ah, do this, do that. And you have no say in the matter. But yet, even with the ability, he limits his own power by choice to say free will is in your hands. Do with it as you will. When Adam was made, he told him that he has dominion over, over basically over the, over the earth. Of course, we know that we gave that dominion over to Satan when we at the fall of Garden of Eden. But at the end of the day, free will was given. He gave Adam the choice to name the animals. Free will. Adam is no different than me and you. He's a sinful man. <laughs> and so is Eve. She's a sinful woman. And they have free choice to choose that. And that's why people, people ask, if God knew we were going to sin, why does, why does he create us? Why does he create the things that make us sin? Why does he create temptation? Free will. If the tree is not in the Garden of Eden, do they really have free will? Or are they just living life doing as they're told to do because they only have these sort of options without options there is no free will if you go on a test and there's only one option for each each question is that really a free will to are you really getting a chance to choose or are you just clicking what they give you there is no option and one thing about the law of america law of any country they have laws set in place what you can and can't do but at the end of the day there's truly no restriction on your ability to do so the bible is very similar the law of the lord it's very clear. The Ten Commandments and so, so much more the Lord states. It, it tells you what's good and what's bad. But yet he never once says, you must do this. You must do that. Or you shall die. Or you shall, or you physically cannot do. No, God gives you the choice. He didn't say everybody must accept Jesus Christ or they will die. No, instead he says, if you accept me, you shall have eternal life. If you accept me, I am the bread of life. Those that eat of me shall never be hungry. Those that drink of me shall never thirst. He says that he is the one that we need. But he says that we are, he will never force himself on us. He will never force himself on us. And you know, with that, there's so much to love about God. And yet we will find every reason to take our free will and not do what is right with it. Because here's one thing you have to learn. That even, no matter what your perspective is, there is truth. No matter what your perspective is, no matter how bad I may want 2 plus 2 to be 4 out of 5, it will always be 4. No matter how much I want to be 7 foot 3, I am 6 foot 2. My perception, my desires, my wants, and, my, and the way I, I, I think things should be do not change how they are. There are people who want sex before marriage to be good. People who want homosexuality to be good. People who want murder to be good. All these different things in the world to be good. But the thing is, they just are not. It's how things have been made. It's how things were, were formed. And who are we to go against the grain and say, no, no, this is right. This is how it should be. Or do we know greater than the creator? Does the creation know more than its creator? Whenever has the pot no more than the potter? Does clay no more than the one that forms it? It does not. We cannot sit here and deny truth 
because of desire. A lot of us will sit here and deny the truth that God is real because we have the desire to do our own thing, to live life how we want it. And you know, it's, a, it's one of the toughest things in life to, to grasp sometimes is, is learning that the things you think are best for you may not be best for you. And you learn that in childhood, the things we used to do, jumping off the monkey bars, all this different stuff. And, and many times we hurt ourselves. Mom and dad told us not to do this, not to do that. We hurt ourselves a lot of time every time we went against it. And sure, there's some times that we were told not to do stuff that, that may not have been that bad. You know what I'm saying? That's, you know, that's, that's the thing of parents. You know what I'm saying? They care for us a lot. You know what I'm saying? Being humans, they, you know, we all can fall short of the glory of God. No one's perfect. So even our parents can tell us wrong sometimes. But one thing about God is that he is not per imperfect like us. He's perfect. And so whatever he says is perfection. Whatever he does is perfection. And so what he has placed before us is perfection, his law. And the thing is, he has blessed us with the ability of free will to choose to submit ourselves to this law. But it's so sad when we choose day in and day out to not take this gift that he has set before us. He never had to place his son, Jesus Christ, on that cross. He never had to die, but he did for our forgiveness. He did that we may be forgiven. Because one thing we know about sin is that sin separates us from God. One thing we know about separation from God is that it leads to death. That is what death is. And anytime we live in sin, we live in separation. And the only way to, to fix that separation is through forgiveness. Through a repaired relationship, which only comes from the acceptance of Jesus Christ and what he did for us on the cross. And the only way that we can accept them is when we choose to accept him as truth. Accept him for who he is and not who we want him to be. No matter how much I may desire Christ to, to look this way or look that way, or for him to say this or say that, or him to commend this sin and, and, and con condemn this sin, it doesn't matter. What he has said has been said. And it is true if it has come from his mouth. For what Jesus proclaimed is truth. What Jesus did shows truth. And we cannot deny the truth. But many of us will sit here and fight the truth out of desire for it not to be true. Out of desire to live in our own way. Out of desire to be correct. Out of desire to deny. Many of us do not want the Lord to be real. Because if God is real, then so is all that he said. And the moment that we know he is real, we have to make the decision. Dang, will I submit myself? That's the, the grasp that I, I came to two years ago when I really took my time as a, as a growing young man and, and asked, OK, Alex, do we really believe God is real? And if we do, are we really going to submit ourselves to him and allow him to do his work in us? Because one thing that happens is when you accept Christ, you're accepting change. You understand that when you accept Christ, you're accepting change. And if you don't accept change, then you're not accepting Christ. When you accept Christ, you're accepting truth. So when you accept Christ, those preconceived notions you had of the world and what you saw was right and wrong before, if it is not aligned with Christ, you must let it go. Because what was once good to man, we must understand that there is a way that seems right unto man, but the end thereof is death. If it is not in alignment with the Lord, then it is wrong. And we have to learn to allow God to change our minds, change our hearts change our attitudes and let us conform to his word and live and submit in, in, in submission to him that he may do his will and work in us. And one thing I, I've learned is that sin doesn't just hurt us, it hurts everybody. That's why whenever we talk about Jesus didn't just die for me, he died for you. He died for us. And when we say us, he didn't just die for you. He didn't just die for Susie. He didn't just die for Paul. He died for me. We have to learn to make it personal and also see the impersonal. Because once you know what's personal, we have to we have to come to grasp with, okay, if Jesus really died on the cross for me, then I must accept him and be ready to change. And then with that change, I may be ready to walk out into the world and, sh and spread that change that others may see it in me and say, okay, I need to change as well. Because it is not good enough for me to have a spot in heaven and my brother or sister be, be condemned because I, I, I chose to be silent with my faith. Because I didn't want to go against the grain of the world. Because I wasn't ready to stand up and, and, and stand out. But no, I'm going to shine my light. You better shine your light. Because at the end of the day, what is the re what is, how in the world am I going to sit here smiling and laughing every day with my brother and sister? Knowing good and well that they have not accepted Christ. 
Because the second you learn the truth, you can do nothing but spread it. You can do nothing but speak it. Because if God is truth, then there is a necessity for everybody to have him. And it is not okay for us to sit here and let people walk blind without the truth. And it is not okay for us to sit here for anybody who is still lacking faith. To sit here and deny the Lord when we know that he is truth. Because all we're doing is keeping ourselves separated from the one that made the bridge. And that bridge is Jesus Christ. No one has to die. The Bible makes it clear that it is God's will that none should perish. But the sad thing is it's almost like there's so many of us who want to. Because God has put, put before us the gift of Jesus Christ. He's put before us all that we need to believe. Some may say, why doesn't God just come down and speak to me? Would that be faith? You would not, that would no longer be faith. There's no question. It's just truth. And that be God, that would truly just be the Lord forcing himself upon you if he came before you and told you, listen, obey, I am here. You have no more choice. You may say, oh, but I could choose to follow him or not. No, because the second that he comes down, you find out God is real. You know for a fact. It's no longer faith. It's no longer walking by faith. No, it, it's just fact. And by, and, by, and by that fact, you have to live by that fact. And there's no longer a choice on, oh, well, I'll choose to live this way or that. Mm. Because it comes to the groups that he is life. And you have, to, you have to, to live with the fact that he is life. And because he is, you're going to make the decision, the choice to live by him. And there's a lot of other reasons God doesn't show himself. And it's not on me to know. It's not on us to know. And I can't give you the full reason. But I want to let you know that God would never force himself upon you. That is why he, he lets you accept him by faith. That is why he sent Jesus Christ. That is why he hang and bled down on the cross. That we may accept him by faith and be forgiven. Because Christ is the bridge, we just have to decide to cross over. God is never going to force you to walk over that bridge, but he supplies it that you may have the choice to do so. And as long as you stay on the opposite side, you will be separated from the Father. But again, right across that bridge, there he is standing, just waiting with open arms, ready to receive you as child. But as long as you make the decision to stay on the opposite side, you will be separated. Like an estranged mother or son, father and daughter. All you have to do is just walk across that bridge. But you must have faith in that bridge that it's going to hold you up and help you bring, make it to the other side. A lot of us don't have faith in that bridge. Because we put our faith in people and people fail us. We put our faith in Christians who, who have failed us. Or people who, who claim to be Christian but they hate on us. People who claim to be Christian but they condemn us. That's not what Christ taught. That's not who Christ is. So don't put your faith in me. I'm Alex Bolton. I'm AB. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm flawed. Wish I could say flawless. Hey, I ain't, not, ain't nothing flawless. These glasses are nice, but they ain't flawless, man. They got flaws to them. This side lean this way half the time. You know what I'm saying? They flawed. I'm flawed. But Christ is not flawed. When you put your faith in, in something of substance, that is when you can begin to walk across. When you know that God, God is not going to fail you, then you know you can walk across. When you put your faith on thin ice, of course, when you step out on it, you're going to fall through. And it's not because you didn't have faith. It's because what you put your faith in. But when you put your faith in Christ, he will not let you fall. And you will make it across that bridge to the, not just the afterlife, but to eternity with God. One who wants to show you love beyond understanding. Take your pain and wipe the tears off your face and give you life more abundantly. Not just life on this earth, not just riches on this earth, but riches in, in glory and eternity beyond understanding. But the only way you'll reach that is when you learn to stop disregarding truth and to accept it. Stop allowing your preconceived notions, your own understanding to get in the way. You must deny yourself. And that is the most difficult thing to do, to deny yourself, your thoughts and your own things. And I'm not telling you to come in blindly. I'm just telling you to stop sitting by and saying no. Begin to start looking for the answer. Stop sitting by and letting them sit in front of your face and just saying, no, look for the answers because God gives them. You just have to be willing to accept it. Let us pray. Dear God, I truly just pray that somebody's soul be saved. And for those, Lord God, who have already put their faith in you, I pray that now, Lord God, we will be willing to step more out on faith. Because we know, Lord God, the one that we put our faith in, Lord God, is one that is not just trustworthy, but the most trustable, Lord God. There is no surface, no substance, Lord God, no being, Lord God, that we can put our faith in more. Lord God, there are so many people who give promises, Lord God, and fall short, but you have never promised anything and failed. And the thing, Lord God, comes down to stop looking at perception. 
Stop looking at how the world perceives and look, Lord God, at what you have said and look at the truth that is in your statements. Let us come before you, Lord God, humbly and accept you, Lord God, at the, 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 the throne of grace, Lord God. Let us just stand by faith and not by sight, Lord God. Living, Lord God, in accordance, Lord God, with your word. We say thank you, Father. We glorify your name. We give ourselves up to you and your services, God, that your will may be done. It's in Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we all pray. Amen. Well, amen. <laughs> Y'all enjoy that vlog. Make sure you leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And I pray you enjoy that vibe, man. Hey, really, I'm, I've been watching so much content um, about the Lord. That's how I really get a lot of my study in. I, I, I read the word, but I want y'all to understand it is so important we learn to deny ourselves and to accept God's truth because it is truth. And the more we do that, the stronger we can stand and walk in faith, the more we'll learn. But as long as we sit and deny him and don't allow him to show his truth, we will sit blind. Open your eyes and let us see. The only way you'll be able to see is to escape the darkness that is in this world and go see the marvelous, marvelous light which the Lord provides. Amen. No limit. Ah! Young and winning, we'll say that I stay, they coming back. They call me Alex at the crib, but they be on the track. My homie Dorsey saying that it's me, but he the Mac. The shorty call me Chester, she a fighter that I attract.